To draw the lumbosacral plexus, label the top of the page from left to right as follows. Nerve root, pelvis and hip, thigh, leg, and foot. Nine spinal nerves form the lumbosacral plexus. Although there are more spinal nerves involved in it than in the brachial plexus, they interweave less so the lumbosacral plexus becomes easier to understand. Begin with the sciatic nerve, which the L4 to S3 ventral rami derive. Show it pass through the pelvis and hip and through the posterior thigh. In the distal thigh, indicate the sciatic nerve branches into two separate nerves drawn in parallel, the perineal and tibial nerves. These nerves continue through the leg and into the foot. During its course, the perineal nerve wraps around the fibular head and passes into the anterior lower leg, whereas the tibial nerve continues through the posterior lower leg. Within the sciatic nerve, the perineal and tibial nerves remain as two separate nerves bundled together within a common epineurium, which is the connective tissue that surrounds them. Indicate that L4 to S2 form the perineal nerve, and L4 to S3 form the tibial nerve. Next, draw the inferior gluteal nerve, derived from L5 to S2, and show that it innervates gluteus maximus. Then, one level above it, show the superior gluteal nerve, derived from L4 to S1, innervates gluteus medius. Demonstrate that gluteus maximus provides hip extension, and gluteus medius provides hip abduction. The gluteus medius inserts at the upper pelvis, and gluteus maximus inserts below it, making it easy to remember that the nerve roots which innervate gluteus medius are higher than those that innervate gluteus maximus. Moving up, draw the femoral and obturator nerves. Indicate that L2 to L4 form them. The femoral and obturator nerves constitute the major nerves of the anterior thigh. The obturator nerve innervates the adductor muscles of the thigh, which are adductor longus and adductor magnus. Bring your thighs together to activate these adductor muscles. We will draw the targets of the femoral nerve in a separate chapter. The perineal nerve also supplies adductor magnus. Above the femoral and obturator nerves, draw the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, which extends into the thigh. Show the L2 and L3 nerves supply it. Think of a long holster on a gun belt to remember its sensory distribution. Above the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, draw the genitofemoral nerve. Indicate the L1 to L2 spinal nerve supply it. The femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve covers sensation from the femoral triangle, and the genital branch covers the cremaster muscle and scrotum and labia. Within the femoral triangle, the nerve is most lateral, medial to it is the artery, and then medial to it is the vein. This organization is important to know when performing femoral venous cannulation. Now at the top of the diagram, draw the iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerves and show that T12 and L1 supply them. The iliohypogastric nerve covers the upper lateral and suprapubic areas, and the ilioinguinal nerve covers the inguinal ligament, superior medial portion of the thigh, and mons pubis. Now, Go back beneath the sciatic nerve and draw the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve and indicate that S1 to S3 form it. It covers the midline back of the thigh. Lastly, at the bottom draw the pudendal nerve and show S4 primarily supplies it, but S2 and S3 also contribute. The pudendal nerve innervates the sphincters of the bladder and rectum and provides sensory information from the anus and genitalia. This concludes our drawing of the lumbosacral plexus.